Hello once again, this is Brother Des coming to you today from Prophetic Bible Teachings. You know, uh, I want you to know you can get these teachings, you know, also through uh, YouTube, Facebook, My Story, Instagram, Twitter, WhatsApp, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. You can also uh, check it out on www.corbanje.com, corbanje.com. All right, and we're coming to you today. So you may help with these ministries. Pray for me. Pray that God will supply the needs with better equipment, etc. So you pray that the Lord will just bless in every aspect. And most of all, that through this ministry, that souls can come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because, you know, as uh, Jesus told John, he says, these sayings of the prophecy is true and the time is at hand. All right? So today for Sunday, January the 30th, 2022, happy Sunday and God's blessing on you and your families. Let's continue our studies uh, from the book of Revelation. Today we move to Revelation chapter 20, and there are 15 verses in this chapter. The theme of the chapter is God's judgment, God's judgment. And when we look at the background now, you remember, the activities in this chapter are connected to the second coming of Jesus Christ the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. We find the last event was the prediction about uh, Jesus Christ's return. When he returns to the earth, according to the prophecy, the armies of Satan, uh, the beasts, the antichrist, the false prophet, and the leaders of such armies will be judged by the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, that righteous judge, the Word of God is one of his names, and Messiah. We find that this battle will be at a place called Armageddon, where the beast, the false prophet, uh, would capture and be cast into the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. The captains of the armies will be defeated. They will be judged by the word that comes from the mouth of the King of Kings. He will speak, and they will die. Then you remember, the bodies of these people will be eaten by the vultures, which will be invited by that angel standing in the sun. You remember, the birds are coming. This now being, uh, it brings us to where Satan, you remember, they were all caught, but now we come to the place where Satan will be caught. And we find that this brings us now to the continuation of God's judgment on all evil and all sin. The outline for chapter 20 will covering these 15 verses of prophetic scripture, as we mentioned, the theme, God's judgment. And so as we look at this outline, first, the capture, the chaining, sealing, and imprisonment of Satan for 1,000 years in the bottomless pit, according to Revelation 20, 1 through 3. Then we see the honoring of the saints in the first resurrection, Revelation 20 and verse 4. We next will come to the explanation of the first and second resurrections, Revelation 20, 5 through 6. And number four will be the release and deception of Satan. Revelation 20, <clears throat> 7 through 9. And then the last section, number five, will be the beginning of God's judgment plan on all evil. I mean, all evil will be, will come to an end. So the study for the day, remember, it's like, the present, how the Bible is presenting it, but it's yet in the future. So as we go today, my topic for today is they got him. They got him. 
That's the capture, chaining, sealing, and imprisonment of Satan for 1,000 years in the bottomless pit, according to Revelation 1 through 3. Notice the prophetic text. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on that dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose for a little season. They got him. The text predicts three major events. One, the angel with the key and chain. Two, the angel has power to grab Satan. And number three, the angel has the authority to bound, cast, shut, and seal God's sentence on Satan for that thousand years. Let's check it out. First, the angel with the key and chain, Revelation 20 and verse 3. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Three important points here in this verse. He came down from heaven. What's that telling us? That the origin of this action will be out of heaven. Second, the point here, Satan will be cast out of heaven, you remember, during the great tribulation on the earth. So he will be loose on the earth as a roaring lion, destroying and deceiving. And then number two, this angel has the key to the bottomless pit or the abyss, which means bottomless. The key is authority to open this abyss. The abyss is bottomless, a place of the dead, hell. The bottomless pit is a place where God imprisons spirit beings, according to 1 Peter 2.4 and Jude 1.6. Both scriptures speak about a group of angels that sinned and were cast down to this hell and delivered into chains of darkness until the time of their judgment. Here in this bottomless pit or abyss, Satan will spend 1,000 years chain, bond, and seal. Revelation 19.20. The scriptures of Revelation connect, connect the beast, that antichrist, who ascends, remember, out of the bottomless pit when he appears on the earth. The Bible says, And the beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they beheld the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. <clears throat> Satan will try to mimic the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Number three we see here, this angel will come down. He'll have a great chain in his hand. This chain has to do with the spirit, with the spirit wall. We're not talking a human uh, business here. This is a spirit being, this angel. He's a spirit being. And Satan is a spirit being. And we find he'll come down with this chain in his hand. Note, the angels who sinned and kept not their first estate were so wicked that God had to put them in, guess what? Chains of darkness. This could be a special chain to hold Satan. This brings us to the second major section of our teaching today. The angel will have power to lay hold or to grab the dragon, the old serpent, the devil. They got him. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him 1,000 years. 
Notice the four titles of Satan. Revelation 12, 3, he is the dragon. Revelation 12, <clears throat> as we go on, he's the serpent. Revelation 2, 10, 12, 9, he's the devil. Revelation 2, 9, 2, 13, 3, 9, and 12, 9, he's known as Satan. This is all in Revelation, where we see him as the dragon, the old serpent, the devil. Satan, you remember in the Garden of Eden, he deceived Eve and Adam as the old serpent. And we find he was cast out and was known as Satan. This brings us to the third section of today, the bounding, the casting, and the shutting up and the sealing of Satan, the dragon, the old serpent, the devil. They got him and cast him into the bottomless pit, the scripture says, and shut him up, set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose for a little season. Notice four major points here in this one verse, the bounding, the casting, the shutting up, and the sealing. Look at the bounding. He'll be bound for 1,000 years. Note, Satan will be cast out of heaven during the great tribulation and therefore deceive the people of the earth. Revelation 12, 9 through 17, and Revelation 13 and verse 4. Notes what our 2 Thessalonians 2, 10 to 12 says. And with all unrighteousness, deception, among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Verse 11 says, And for this reason God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they should all, all may be condemned. All may be condemned. Then we see they cast him into the bottomless pit or the abyss. Notice, we talk about they cast him. I mean, they threw him, literally, they want to throw in. They cast him like he had no authority. And we find this angel shut him up or close the door or the opening to the abyss or this bottomless pit in chains of darkness. And the fourth piece, the ceiling, inability, the ability that he would deceive the nations no more until the thousand years are over and he'll be loose for a short while. Note, Jesus defeated Satan and sin issue in principle at the cross. But Satan is still active today. At the beginning of the millennium, the angel will bind him. He will not be free to influence the nations who will be entered into the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. God will allow his release for a short period of time. And it's for a reason, during or after the millennium. So you say, what is needful for us today? When we look at the application, Satan is in the business of deception. Throughout history, he propagated the lie that mankind, by his own efforts, can provide a perfect environment. This never succeeded, nor will it ever succeed. History, when we look at the history of communism, Communism was an attempt to provide a social environment whereby people would be equal. However, no amount of government can create a perfect people. People cannot reach their ultimate potential on their own efforts. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. The old song says, 
like a ship, we'll be out on the sea without a sail, only with Jesus. Two, Satan is on the lease today. He is out to deceive, and only faith in the word of God will enable us to resist him today. And that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. Remember, even in the great tribulation, and they overcame him by the word of their testimony, by the blood of the Lamb, and they loved not their life even unto death. The scriptures remind us, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, he walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. It also says, resist him. Be steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world, according to 1 Peter 5 and 8. He says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, my adversary, the devil, he walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Note, Satan is not bound today. He is free to roam about, seeking whom he may devour. Literally gulp down. However, Satan power, Satan's power cannot control us if we operate by faith in the promises of God. The number three thing here today to remember, Satan's main deception, it involves the word of God. He wants to destroy its credibility. If he can do that, he can destroy the credibility of God. But even if our gospel is hit or veiled, it is veiled or hid to those who are perishing, whose minds, the Bible says, that the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine in them. 2 Corinthians 4, 3. Listen to the direct. But even if our gospel be veiled or hidden, it is veiled or hidden because it is to those who are perishing. Meaning, perishing people do not understand the things of God. Number four, Satan deceives us about the truth and the true values of life. He instills values of power loss, sex loss, and greed. These things are the polar opposite of faith in Jesus Christ as one who provides everything we need. They got him. But the point is today, they got him. Or you could say, well, they're going to get him. They got him as far as God is concerned. But don't let him get you. The blood of Jesus Christ is the weapon. To have this weapon, one must know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Take him today. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made for sin. So if we ask him today to come into our lives, he'll save us. He'll save you. Amen. May God bless you and your family today. Keep trusting in God. Hold on to his word. Look up. Don't let him get you. They got him. Take Jesus today. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord.